tower is made of stone and with rectangular plans tending toward the square were constructed in various parts of Europe throughout the medieval and renaissance periods. There are tower structures, all of them quite similar, in France, northern Spain, the Balkans, Germany, in the border area between England and Scotland, and in Italy. Maybe the most famous medieval towers are to be found in San Gimignano. Even today the town is an impressive sight, but apparently it had many more towers during its heyday. There are also some very fine towers in Ireland. You might know them better as castles, but as architects we're trained to refer to them as tower houses. There is no clear narrative about the development of the Irish tower house. The various sources suggest that they began to be built around 1400 and continued to be constructed until sometime in the 1600s. The distribution of these towers across the island is interesting. Remains of hundreds of towers in varying degrees of completeness are mostly found in the red shaded area on this map, usually on rivers or near the coast. But outside this band, and especially to the extreme north, very few are found. The pattern of distribution has been discussed extensively in the political historical context. But what I find more interesting is that there is some unity of character in the area where the towers are located. The area of tower concentration is, for the most part, the green, gently rolling, hilly part of Ireland that we see reflected in popular culture. And it does suggest a question. Is the character of this area due to the presence of the towers, or were the towers built in this area because of its character? Irish towers are mostly rectilinear in form, although we do have circular ones as well. And they're usually four or five stories tall. The main plan type is like this. It has what Louis Kahn would call served and servant bays. The smaller bay, the servant, has an entrance and a spiral stairs. The bigger bay has larger spaces of different types stacked one above the other. The sections are a bit like this. Sometimes the building sits right on top of solid rock, like a raised outcrop. The walls are thick and made of stone sometimes with a batter toward the bottom. There is always at least one vaulted stone floor and it's been said that this is to guard against the spread of fire. The floors above the vault are made of timber with very large beams supported on stone corbels. The roofs were made from timber as well. At the parapet level there's a walkway which is guarded by what we call crenellations. These days the majority of towers have an exposed stone finish, but when built they would have been covered with a render we refer to as a harl. Here's a house that was recently reharled. There is a sense of the Irish tower almost growing out of the ground. The stereotomic arrangement of the stone at the base gives rise to a tectonic sensibility as you move toward the top. It's a very elegant idea and one of the reasons tower houses are so architecturally pleasing. Clearly these buildings had defensive characteristics, but for me the defensive details pale in significance in comparison to their aesthetic qualities. Some of these buildings are so beautiful that you'd have to wonder if the primary motive for their construction was actually defence. It's hard to find a tower house that doesn't make a positive contribution to its setting, no matter how beautiful that setting might be. Most Irish tower houses are disused, which seems a pity. They look beautiful from a distance, but when you come across a disused one, they feel a little bit more forbidding up close, so the enjoyment of them can be limited. It seems to me that when a building, no matter what type it is, is well constructed and finely honed in plan and section, it's crying out to be reused. 